in one of the earlier programs earlier meditation sessions i had mentioned living from the heart is responding to inner guidance of love and wisdom in the heart this may appear to be irrational and even be against one's own apparent self interest that is its beauty and power it does not depend on emotions it submits faithfully spontaneously and joyfully to the requirements of the moment it knows no fear and always submits to the whole normally we interact into the outer world of objects and beings as guided by our consciousness and its understanding our consciousness is always caged between dualities simple reason one of the things that doctors have found that when they put the food in front of an infant the child picks up all that is beneficial for him if the child is sick and you put variety of foods naturally the child will pick up all that is beneficial for him you do not have to train him that he should take x amount of protein x amount of vitamins minerals and things like these mother may get panic the child may pick up something which is not beneficial to him the parents may get panic but the child if he is left alone picks up only what is beneficial to him while he is suffering from that ailment this is natural and spontaneous this is how we are born child is born innocent at the time of his birth he is in total harmony with all that is a child may smile with a bandit with a knife or gun in his hand whereas you as an adult will be tossing and turning helter skelter out of your ignorance to protect your near and dear ones what is the difference between the innocence of the child and so called self imposed wisdom of an adult the child is in harmony with the existence he is the embodiment of the fact that the same divine current that flows in you flows in the bandit as well but at that time the child is his consciousness is at the level of unconscious he is not subconscious he is at the level of unconscious as well as the, the seeds of subconscious also at play then in the process of our bringing we impose various values that the child has to be living in a particular way all those people that the parents are not in harmony with child cannot interact with them if you do if he does so he is scolded why did he go by a particular neighbor with whom we do not talk we teach him many things child is being brought up in a christian environment he goes by a neighbor and he is fascinated by the music and the prayers and he is given an offering when he brings home mother gets angry this is how we distort the child then he is not responding to the inner guidance of love and wisdom in the heart instead he is guided by the wisdom that is imposed upon him by the parents by the society by the priestly community certainly this may appear to be irrational and even be against one's own apparent self interests you are living a false life if you go against them you are not welcomed 
If you are living in your parents' house, you have no freedom to bring to entertain your friends as freely as you would like to. When the children are grown up, they became the head of the house and the earlier generation has to relegate themselves to a secondary position. Your respect will be maintained. Those people will not drink and smoke in front of you. But when you impose restrictions, things go haywire. The natural beauty, the understanding, the awareness that everyone is born with is lost in the process of upbringing. The natural way the consciousness does not depend on emotions. Someone wishes you every day, brings flowers for you, you have a special corner for him. When that person visits your home, he is given a special treatment. That time you forget that everyone carries the same spa. Even in the temples, I have seen when a dignitary has to visit, even the Hindu gods and goddesses have to wait because the Prime Minister or the Minister is coming for this particular ceremony. So who is given the importance? We give importance because of many considerations. We say the image of God that is enshrined in the temple is omnipotent, omniscient and omnipresent. But deep down we all know that is dead. Minister is more powerful than these gods. These gods we use as a business on one hand for those devotees and the ministers and the people of authority that are coming, they are to benefit us. Child is not guided by the, these kind of ulterior motives. It submits faithfully, spontaneously and joyfully to all that is required in that moment. You are celebrating a function, anniversary or birthday, many guests are invited out of courtesy out of many social considerations you have to entertain and provide them the welcome according to that whereas in case of the child it is not so and when you are guided by that inner oneness love and the wisdom of the heart that we are part of one synergistic harmony we are all part of one synergistic harmony everyone carries the same spark within then you are guided by love and wisdom of the heart otherwise your love and wisdom is tainted by the outside influences the social political and otherwise and when you are guided by the love which is not bound by any cause and effect, it is like a rain cloud, it is like sun that shines on everyone irrespective of what may be. When you go to the courthouse, a bandit is treated differently than the magistrate, everyone stands up when magistrate or the judge enters the chamber. But nothing like that happens when the bandit is being brought to the chamber. The same bandit and the judge may walk on the street. Neither the sun nor the rain cloud makes any prejudice against any one of them. It showers on everyone irrespective of their status, irrespective of their rules. The sun never says that I will not give sunlight to the bandit. But when there is a function at your home, the seating arrangement is done according to the list of the visitors. There is a row of for VIPs a special kind of chairs. They are asked to sit down in the front row. Someone is there to usher them. They are given a special treatment, whereas ordinary people are not given such treatment. This is 
not the inner guidance of love and wisdom of the heart. When an individual attains to enlightenment or he is conscious of this inner love, the way, the energy that flows within, a different kind of wisdom manifests through his being, then he is not prejudiced against anyone. Of course, there happens at times in order to have the work going on. For instance, there is a function at your place. There are different individuals who are given responsibilities. They have a special authority to go here and there wherever they are needed. This is not against the wisdom in the heart. This is functional. But when you in are prejudiced in your treatment for those guests, then it is a different thing. So when you are living from the heart, you are responding to the inner guidance of love. Love is not a function of the body. It is the flow of energy from deep within. And when this energy becomes your understanding, then it is the wisdom of the heart. This may be, normally if you are guided by that, this will appear to be irrational and even against one's own apparent self-interest. You are not going to get benefited by this particular man, but your inner wisdom says that all guests are to be treated equally. Because this guest does not have any special authority or can be beneficial to you. In most of the cases, when we have a get-together at our place, these are basically the social functions. You invite all those people with whom you can be benefited in your business, in your the job or things like these. But when you are guided by the experience of love within and wisdom in the heart, then it does not depend on emotions and things like these. And there is no fear. It knows no fear and always submits to the whole. What it is needed at that moment, it submits to that.